So this totally seems like deja vu because this is how we started last week's What Sold video with selling one of these dragon, naturally speaking, home edition uh, sealed software packages. So anyway, I think I already told you last week that I had sold, we had ended up selling both of them. We had two available and this one sold for $90. Hey everybody, welcome to another What Sold video. We are talking November 27th through December 3rd, so we are almost caught up. I was behind in these What Sold videos and I really prefer, uh, it just works better in my brain to do a What Sold of everything that sold like that week before. Um, it kind of helps as I'm going through like haul videos and things like that. Otherwise things are so like, I can't remember what I've showed you and what we've talked about. So I just, it helps me to kind of keep things a little more chronological if you get my drift. So, um, we are talking eBay, Poshmark, Ruby Lane. We had a sale from Depop this week. So exciting. A couple on Etsy. So lots of vintage, lots of fun things. So let us check out. We are also, as I go, I have a couple clips of some shipping that Mr. Pishposh did. So I will uh, stick those clips in where they go, kind of. And um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Just just showing you how we ship things. That doesn't mean there's that's the only way to do it or that it's the absolute best way to do it. But we'll just give you some ideas of how we handle different types of items, okay? Okay, so next thing that sold that week on eBay is this hat. The brand was called Norla. Let me get to the label. Oh my goodness, I, here we go. Norla Canada, so the uh, material tag brought out that it was a bunch of different materials, but there was alpaca, it was wool, um, some other maybe cotton in there too. And, um, I just, I don't know. I like the look of it. I picked it up at a thrift store with some other very similar looking beanie hats with the big kind of fur pom-poms and love your melon, I think are the ones I picked up, but this one actually sold faster than those that I have listed. I think they're still listed and those sold for seven, that sold for $17. Next up with these Nintendo Wii Motion Plus Controller Adapters sold for $20. Must have been an offer. We did get a, a claim that popped up one day that they didn't receive this. And then almost immediately um, the claim got closed because they found out that a family member had actually received the package and just put it somewhere that they didn't know. So that does happen kind of often. So whenever I get a, hey, I didn't receive this item, that's one of the first things I suggest to the buyer is to just check with all their other family members and also check with neighbors sometimes if they can. And sometimes the package turns up, so you just never know. Okay, if you guys remember, this was in a haul video I did a while back. It's called the Arctic Creel. It's a fishing creel bag. And it was a little bit stained every, and everything, but we just sold it as is. And I paid, I think I remember paying $5 at this yard sale. I guess you could call it an estate sale. It's an estate sale company um, in the area. And then she, I don't know if there's still, how many estate sales they're still doing. Um but they, she'll do in the summertime, she'll do some yard sales, either of her leftover items or if she clears out an estate or something like that, she just gathers everything at, you know, her house and does a series of weekends where she does yard sales of estate sale items. So that's where I got this and that sold for $35. This was a hunting jacket, hunting shirt, shacket, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it was Rebark. Mr. Pishposh, Mr. Pishposh picked up, let's see if I can find, 
don't know where his label is. Oh, it just says it in the camouflage pattern itself. So um, he picked up a few different vintage hunting um, pieces of clothing on a little thrift trip that we did. And so this one actually sold for $25. This little clock, very interesting. Like normally we sell these um, little vintage clocks on Etsy. And then this one was not wood grain. I'm not quite sure where we picked this one up. Probably the bins. But um, just on off-white, nothing super special. And so he put it on eBay. Um, we were going, we went to ship it and he said he found, he could find some, like he saw some marks in the plastic that he pulled out and he's like, he checks his, he checked his pictures and he's like, oh, you can't really see them in the pictures. So he tried to take better pictures. He contacted the buyer and just said, Hey, I just wanted to double check that, you know, that it's okay. And I don't know if they were like scuff mark kind of things. Um, but just something we hadn't like disclosed. And so they fortunately answered right away and said, yeah, no problem. Just send it. And we got really good feedback. They said they appreciated our, you know, being conscientious in our communication and that the clock was exactly what they were looking for. And that sold for $25. This one, I forgot to ask my husband, um, I assume this has something to do with our like a personal item. He we have a Ford F one fifty, so I, I'm thinking he's somehow either got these for it or I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't want them anymore. Maybe he didn't end up needing them, but fifty dollars and I don't know if he thrifted those or if he, he got them himself for the truck. Good question. Denim and Supply. I am so glad this shirt sold. This was one of my oldest listings, probably. And I hadn't ever found a lot. Denim and Supply is a line of Ralph Lauren. And I had never... Let me see. I'll show you the tag. Maybe if my computer will cooperate. Um, I had never... Like... I don't think I had, I think this was one of the first pieces of denim and supply that I had found. And it's not one of their higher end, which I didn't realize at the time, but I just was like interested in the fact that it was actually denim and supply. And I, you know, was like, oh, look, it's like a baseball style shirt. Like, this is interesting. Anyway, this thing would not sell and not sell and <laughs> not sell. It was such a not good pickup. So anyway, this is even the pictures were taken in the last place we lived. That's why I know for sure that it's an older listing. But anyway, it sold for full asking price of $25. <laughs> Next up is some perfume. So I did sell this perfume on eBay because it was full and I could... I could list it as like a new without box. Um, you can't list uh, partial or used perfume and a few other things on eBay anymore. We used to be able to get around it by using the collectibles uh, category, but they started cracking down on that as well. I'm sure as people still get away with it. Um, you know, you'll see. I see solds all the time for partial bottles of, of things, but I just prefer to put, um, used perfume and, and all that over on Mercari where it sells pretty well. So this is Victoria's Secret. I just picked this up at the thrift store. It sold within a couple days. I paid probably like $2. I think it was, I think it was a half off day and it was four originally, or I paid the full four, whatever, but it was, it sold for $40, that full asking price. Then we had this tub, distressed copper. So this was a personal item in a way. We had gotten some things we were selling for a friend that were copper, and we decided to keep this. So we, um, we bought it off our friend and we actually were selling this at a loss, but we used it for a little while. We're selling it for $65. We sold it for $65. Um, 
Um, a lot of that copper, rustic, certain pieces, I don't know. I don't think the market is as strong as it used to be for that. So the wash tub, it also did not hold water. We just kind of used it to, like as a planter. I We had put some blocks in it and then put the, the geraniums or whatever they were, like, you know, up kind of up higher in it. So we were just kind of using it for decor, obviously not for washing. <laughs> but anyway, so that sold. It was fairly big thing, but $65 on that. If these look familiar, it's because we sold a pair of uh, an identical pair that were a size small medium not that long ago. These sold for $20. I think the other pair sold for a similar amount, if not less, maybe even over on Posh. I'm not sure. But uh, these were just gaiters. They're called. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, it's kind of late at night, but. Um, these are called hiking gaiters. You put them over the bot, like the ankles of your pants. And so as you're hiking, going through brush, you protect your pants or, or if it's wet or whatever. Um, and we used to backpack when Mr. Pishposh and I were younger. <laughs> we actually got out and about. And um, I think we had bought them and then just never used them. And so he was cleaning something out and just ended up listing both of them. Next item is Nike vest. It's a puffer vest, 700 downfill. And it was Nike SB, which is their skateboarding line, which is, if I'm going to sell any Nike anymore, it's either this SB or um, ACG, pretty much. I don't really bother with much other Nike anymore. Anyway, it was a size large, and it sold for $60 was the offer that we took. I love this purse. It was so interesting. The brand was Frenchie of California, and it was this, like, snakeskin pattern. It was orange. Here's the tag. Made in the USA. Um, what was also cool was that it had its original Nordstrom tag on it. So that was kind of fun. And that sold for $30. I paid $6. And then an, one of these items, my husband, he just like, he just, it just tickles him, right? I don't know where this came from. He doesn't know where it came from. Um, I don't, you know, it's just kind of been... I think we've just kind of had it. I don't know that he picked it up recently. Who knows? It's probably from the bins or I could have even been before that. But um, anyway, it is just a chimney globe, you know, for an oil lamp or something like that. And there was something a little bit different about it. I think the bottom was like ground glass. It was just a little bit different. Anyway, not like huge money or anything, but $25 and it sold like within a day. And like to me, I would look at this at a thrift store or a yard sale and I'd be like, boring and not even care anything about it. But of all the clear chimneys that sold that are listed, like are sold right away. So <laughs> that's just very interesting to me. I know less than nothing about clear glass. So if you know anything about that, you know, I mean, I know certain things with chimneys, you know, can be good, but in oil lamps, I don't know. Clear, clear glass is not my thing. Next up, Caruso Steam Setter. Okay, so when I picked this up, I'm pretty sure I picked these up at the bins. Um, I We sold these in the past. We've sold them a few times, actually, like years and years ago. And... Um, I kind of had gotten it because I knew that you can sell the curlers as replacement. Like if it's not worth listing the whole thing, the, especially the jumbo ones actually sell, you can sell those as replacement. And, um, but you know, I never kind of got around to telling Mr. Pishposh that. And so he just grabbed it one day and listed the whole thing for $30 
and it sold like really fast. So I feel like I see them all the time at thrift stores. So it's just kind of something to keep in mind. Next up is a coffee mug. So I love this little coffee mug. It's, it's Marimekko. It's from the eighties. Okay. So such a basic little kid style mug. The maker of it was actually false graph. The designer is Marimekko. So if you see Marimekko, anything, fabric, home decor, Marimekko, you just buy it because it will sell. Okay. Um, so when I saw this really basic airplane, um, I'm trying to think what it reminded me of something Ikea, like Ikea or something. And so I did flip it over to see what it was all about. I paid like 50 cents at the most and I saw Marimekko and I was like, no way. And so then buy false graph USA. So I looked up comps on some of these, I think the airplane had sold on Terra Peak like for $20 or $25. Um, there were none listed. And then some of the other really basic designs, there's like a bus, there's a barn, you know, very primitive looking type pictures. And, or, ju or would you say juvenile? Anyway, I just decided to throw it up there for $35 and it sold for the full asking price of 35 I have another good mug sale I want to share with you. Deneen Pottery. This is a Bolo brand for, can be, for coffee mugs. So I have this one listed. I have um, another one. Like all of a sudden I was finding, like I've never found Deneen before. And then all of a sudden I was finding, like I found one at every thrift store I went to for like a week. And I didn't get every single one. I did get another one that is for a very local Montana coffee shop. And I'm just like experimenting. I listed that one. Um, but this one was a little bit different because it was for a national park, for the Olympic National Park. It's Lake Crescent Lodge. And um, it was from 2018. So when I looked up Deneen Pottery and National Park mugs, they were doing really, really well. This one was not, I didn't find anywhere. So I went ahead and listed it for $50 and that's exactly what it sold for. So right here, I am going to insert some, uh, shipping, like a little shipping clip or just a clip, you know, a clip that Mr. Pishposh and I did a little bit earlier. Okay. So I just wanted to share the fact that as we're doing our weekend shipping, we sold four coffee mugs. So these are mugs. You've, I've either already talked about them in this video or I will talk about them in a little bit more detail about why they sold and for how much and everything. But I just kind of wanted to emphasize the fact that this is generally a good time of year to sell coffee mugs. It seems like our coffee mug sales go up, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's definitely coffee weather. And so you want me to put you in the camera? <laughs> Drinking my... Yeah, I do. Drinking my coffee. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> So I'm out here in the shipping lair of Mr. Pish Posh, and I thought he could just remind us. We've had a few other shipping. I say I don't know what order things will show up in this video, but at this point, but um, he will or has had a few other little shipping tips and clips for you. So I just thought we could watch him ship okay. this mug. Sounds good. First of all, it's not a lair. It's a cave. <laughs> Shipping cave. Yeah, I'm All not right, a villain. Whatever. I'm a good guy. All at right. least I hope. Okay, so this mug um, went priority. So got a priority mug box is what we call it. Seven by seven by six. Okay. We also have these um, in non-priority. So if they go ground advantage. Um, so yeah, what I do is usually four squares of a big bubble wrap and cut it in half. Sometimes they cut better. These, these are a little bigger than your standard big ones, but anyway, it's good because it provides better protection. And then- I, I like, think it's American Bubble Boy. They have sizes that you can't get other places. Yeah. So that's why. They're good because they actually give you more right. protection than the other ones, but 
So yeah, I do it like that. Sometimes hit that with a little piece of tape and then that protects the handle really well. And then I just do the opposite with this. And I like that because it gives you a lot of surface area, um, but you don't get those big tufts at the top and yeah, bottom, which make it hard. And then it'll fit right in there. So like I say, this is, this stuff's a little bit poofier. Right. Um, you put so the handle into the corner? I always put the handle into the corner. My thing came off there, so hold on. Sometimes because it's so poofy, that tape doesn't want to stick. And, and then pulled. I look for places like this where maybe it's a little thin. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll just throw some of the thinner stuff in there just to give it a little extra protection. And again, going back into that putting the handle in the corner. And, like so. and that and little bit of tension mm -hmm. is good, I think, because then it holds that in nice and tight. Main idea is to not have anything moving around no. in the box. Yep, and making sure that handle is this, you know, this is the strongest part. Right. If it's over here, it can get broken pretty easy. Alrighty, thank you, honey. You're welcome. Okay, so this next one is a dress that's actually being returned to me. The buyer asked me, it was very interesting, she asked me all these questions that were in the description. So, I, you know, at first I was kind of like, eh, it's kind of sketchy. But then I realized that, you know, on, if people are looking at things on their phone, eBay, Etsy, they all, no, like none of them make it really super easy to read the description. You know, it's usually like read item description, right? And so then you have to click and, and read all the information. So I, um, I, I just copied and pasted my whole description. I'm like, here's the information in case you, you know, couldn't find it. I said it nicely. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple days later, she, you know, she wanted measurements and everything. Um, a couple days later, she sent an offer, I think, or I sent an offer of $30. And so she, she bought it. And then a couple days later, she wanted to send it back. <laughs> she said it didn't fit. It was too short. I was like, okay, I understand. No worries. Just when we're getting our, like, returned, like, can't finished out, you know, then comes another one. So we'll see. We'll try to sell it again. But Jude Connolly is, can be a pretty good name to keep an eye out for. This was a little camp kettle, um, very distressed granite ware, um, had a redwood handle. So again, that primitive look, not, you know, selling terribly high anymore and only sold for $25. You know, I told my husband later, I said, you know what, if we've got big kind of bulky stuff that is kind of a pain to ship, then let's not bother doing it unless it's worth like 50 bucks or something like that. You know, if it's going to be sold for 20, $25, I don't know that that's actually worth the time and the packing material. You know, if it's a small item or a fast, easy to ship item, I don't mind so much. But anyway, that was just my feeling on it. What do you guys think? Is it worth the time? Um, so I will show you. We have a clip of how Mr. Pishposh packaged this up. Um, I think it has to do with just the fact that he was able to flip a box inside out. So I will share that here. Don't have a pre-made box ready for that. So what I do have is a nice burrito box from Costco, yum. So instead of trying to make everyone hungry that sees this box as it goes past, what we like to do is uh, just flip them inside out. Um, you notice they always have this tab that's glued. I just have an old knife. This was a Cutco knife that we bought to sell, but looks like it's been modified. Um, you don't want it too sharp because it'll cut the cardboard but sharp enough. And then usually just kind of run it 
right down that joint and that'll pull that. Sometimes if the glue is weaker, it'll come apart pretty easily. And then we just flip that over and tape that edge. And the reason we like to do this is just kind of for looks. It gives you a clean box, um, a label that is going to stick out prominently. It doesn't kind of disappear into the graphics. And so you pretty much get what looks like a good new box. And now this, because it's already distressed and it's metal, um, Normally, if it was something breakable, I would never use a box this small, but for this, we're going to go ahead and do that. Just put in a little bit of bubble wrap. We buy this stuff that's a little bit wider. You can rip it smaller, which is the normal size if you buy it at the store. But this one works good for larger items because it wraps, you don't have to do multiple layers. And then with this, what I'm gonna do on this one, is probably wrap it separately and set it next to it. Or, yeah, it sticks up too high. So, again, this is something that's distressed, so it's, it's uh, designed to be chipped. <laughs> We don't want it to get dented or anything worse, you know, in shipping. But again, we're talking about an item here that is bought for decorative purposes, I'm sure. But still, want to protect it, but not go overkill on something of this uh, quality. I mean, that wood handle, I definitely want to protect that a little bit more. So, get that. wrapped up all right and that's good to go for for that item next up i sold some more underwire um this wasn't you know a huge sale but i just knew it would sell it's duluth trading company it's a boxer brief their the line is called buck naked and it sold only for $15, but that was the full asking price and it sold within a couple days. And then this was a really fun sale. I love this. Okay, so they were putting this out. I went to a thrift store that kind of rolls carts out um, like big bins and then the workers unload from there. And... Um, you know, but they leave it. I think they kind of do it on purpose. They kind of roll stuff out and then they just leave it. And a lot of people come and shop out of the new stuff and then they have less stuff they have to put away. Um, I wish all thrift stores were kind of like that. Do your thrift stores do that? Do they let you pick from the new racks? I like when they do. Anyway, um, so I saw this box and I saw the name, I think, first acorns Ac acorns <laughs> it kind of sounds like it would be acorns right um but and i wasn't quite so sure but i was like that sounds really familiar and then what did i see next i saw that it was a table obviously um anyway it wasn't i think it can zoom. Made in Norway. There we go. I couldn't remember what country it was. I was about to say Denmark, but I knew it wasn't Denmark. So I saw Made in Norway and I was like, whoop, and I better take this. And it was $8 at the thrift store. And so it's, it's part of a line of furniture that they do called Stressless. And it's a swing table. And it just fit in this little box. And it sold for $150. That was our full asking price. So I was really happy about that. So I see Norway, Denmark, Sweden, anything like that. I am going to look it up and double check what it's worth. And then you've seen 
this one get shipped already. This was a tie that we sold, Pendleton. So um, it was a, I got this at the bins. Let me show you the label. Sorry, there it is. Um, so just a little vintage made in the USA, Pendleton square end necktie, skinny tie. So, you know, 80s. And that sold for $35. Okay, so let's move over to Poshmark. Another brand that we talked about in the um, tie video was Vineyard Vines, but this one's actually a belt. And it was size 32. It had, you know, fall. It was like a fall themed one. Acorns. Speaking of acorns, that's like the theme. <laughs> um, autumn leaves, that kind of thing. It took a few weeks to sell. It sold for $20. Next up was this Snap-on mug, which sold on uh, Poshmark. And I believe I talked about it already when I talked about those mugs that sold. Did I show you that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, I showed that clip already. Uh, maybe not. Oh, man, I shouldn't do these videos late at night. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, we have, let me show you this other clip that I have um, of Mr. Pishposh shipping this one because he ended up doing something a little bit different than what he normally does for mugs. Okay, I'll share that with you now. It sold for $25, by the way. Okay, I want to show you how we ship a mug uh, like this. It's tall um, that won't fit in a classic 7 by 7 by 6 mug box. Um, and this method will work either with ceramic uh, or like this is aluminum. Um, still needs to be well protected because if it got hit hard enough, the handle could break. So this is the box we use. Um, of course, this is when it goes priority. So this mug is going on posh. So I could put it in a medium flat rate, uh, but that's a lot of extra space to fill. Um, and you say, well, this is the same size, so wouldn't it be also a lot of extra space? Um, but we have a little trick to use these boxes, uh, but make them a little bit smaller. So what I'll do is cut it down, and we want to get enough protection top and bottom, so I'll go for 10 inches. Um, these are 14 plus, so it would be 15. It's a lot of extra uh, volume to pay for shipping and for shipping materials. So if we cut this down, then we can save on that. So because it's 10, I'll actually mark it at 9 and 3 quarter, um, because then once it's all folded, if I actually mark it at 10, sometimes it, it will actually be bigger than 10 because of the folds. So if we do 9 and 3 quarter, then we can be sure that it'll be under 10. So 9 and 3 quarter on each of these corners. And then what I do is I just take my razor knife here and just cut these out carefully, nice and slow. Want to be safe. And that way I don't have to flip the box inside out and do anything like that. Now the nice thing about these is they tend, because of the way that corrugation is, they tend to fold right on your cut. So that's easy. Pull this section off and toss that. And then this part, kind of hard to see on the camera um, because of the height. But what I ended up doing is, well, there we go. So that's a little off because of this, but what I prefer to do is actually cut that. But you can see as the corrugations. Um, so then just basically taking off some of these, and you can do this with scissors if you're more comfortable with that. I work with a razor knife every day, so you're comfortable with, with that. Now on this, I'm going to cut this off so that I can fold it. Um, because I want to be able to fold this one over the top. And then again, what I do here is just cut through, follow, trace that. And now what we've got is, we 
we have a priority box that's shorter and we don't pay for all that extra packaging. So set this aside, get our bubble wrap. With these larger mugs, I, I don't cut them obviously because you want to get that extra packing top and bottom. And you could do this with paper as well, but um, it's a lot of paper. We just have had good success with using the bubble wrap. With this, I'll kind of tuck these down, fold them over as I go, and that will help everything hold. It still tends to want to pop free, so especially on this. And then do the same thing on this side. Fold those all over. Fold these over. And then slide that in there. And there it is. Yeah. Good protection. Good priority box. We don't have to pay for all that extra packaging or volume on the box. So hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, stay tuned for more tips and tricks that we found for shipping to make the process uh, easier, less frustrating. Okay, just a quick editing note here after having watched Mr. Pishposh's clip here. Um, so yes, he did mention that, that as we know, um, that mug was selling on Poshmark, so the size of the box really didn't matter. Um, but just the principle in general, like if you are, if you need to do this for a package for eBay or something and you want to keep the, the package under a certain size, then this is definitely a, a method that you can use. Um, but also to keep in mind, the reason he could cut down that box is because it's regular priority. You don't want to change the shape of a flat rate box like a medium flat rate or a large flat rate, it's it's okay to change the shape of the other priority, regular priority boxes, and that's fine. Um, you can even sometimes, like the shoe boxes, we've put two shoe boxes together. I'm sure we'll show a clip of that sometime next time that comes up. But anyway, just wanted to clarify that, yes, it was Poshmark, so it didn't matter, but it also, he made a good point, you save on shipping materials. You don't have to use as much filler or bubble wrap if you have, if you're putting something in a box that's too big for it. Another Poshmark sale that week was this Lululemon um, jacket, men's jacket. I love it when Lululemon, st you know, still has its size tag and everything right there. This was a little bit of an older style. It was kind of hard to find. Um, I, we did come up with a name for it, but this color combination wasn't quite right, but I think the style was the same. So I just think it was an older version of that jacket, but it sold and I got my five stars and they accepted it and everything like that. So it's all good. Sold these little boots that I picked up at the thrift store. I just like the look of them. The brand is Jeffrey Campbell and I love the tapestry. Um, kind of look. They sold pretty quickly on Poshmark after I got them listed. I was a little concerned about the the fact that because it's a tapestry fabric, when I looked at other boots like this, um, there were, like, the placement of the fabric is different on every boot, so you're not going to have identical boots. And so as I did this, I realized, as I was taking pictures, that one whole panel in the back just happened to be blank. <laughs> it was like the blank part of the fabric. And so I was like, wow, if they're looking for something symmetrical, it's not going to happen. So I actually went over to a Poshmark group on Facebook that I'm in, Poshmark Thrifting, and just kind of like said, do you think this is going to be a problem? And so I got suggestions for different ways to like word it and point it out and explain it and everything. So I did all that and yeah, they sold pretty quickly for $44. So that was a nice little 
Nice little sale for Poshmark. I sold this vest. Um, they asked me a question, I think, about condition for sure, which, you know, it's a white vest, so I don't blame them. Um, made in Hong Kong, an older polo golf Ralph Lauren, probably Y2K era. Um, it was it was neat. It was like a sweater, but then the inside was lined with a mesh. So kind of different. Outdoor research sold for 25. We had it higher, but we just were looking to get some sales one day and we got this offer for 25 and went ahead and took it. Um, it's just a basic kind of fleece jacket. And then Mountain Hardware, we talked about this brand the other day as being, you know, that it has a following, it can do pretty well. So this was another fleece, but sold for $40. I like the color. It was, you know, it was a neat color. And let's go over to Ruby Lane. Check out this brooch. This is slightly disturbing, but it was this little pixie-like girl with her flower hat. Um, kissing a squirrel <laughs> and if you can see it's enamel it's just like this little 80s pin and you know it just has it's chippy and everything like that with enamel missing but I'm like you know honestly somebody needs this so I listed it and sold it for ten dollars it took a little while um, but it was interesting too that um, so the Ruby Lane, the sales you see this week are still, it's the Ruby Lane red tag sale was still going. They did some crazy like 10 day sale and it was the 50% off, but this one did not sell. I don't think I had it in the sale because I knew I could put it over probably in the quirky vintage Facebook group and somebody would snatch it up. Um, but I just, you know, didn't get around to it and I didn't end up marking this one down so it sold for the full asking price of 10. This was another item that sold for full price. Um, I didn't have it in the sale but it sold that week. It was a divided relish dish and the brand, I'm trying to think, don't think it had any markings but I recognized, yeah, I recognized the color and like the color combo. I knew it was I knew it was a, like went to some dinnerware that I've seen before. So Taylor Smith Taylor, the pattern is called Cafe, and um, I knew it was a really good mid-century kind of color and probably a, a little bit of an unusual piece. So I went ahead and bought it and listed it, and it sold for $30, so I was happy with that. Next up is another vintage sale of this little easel display stand that had a miniature little portrait, you know, velvet backed. It's probably like from the 60s or something like that. And we picked this up on our road trip. It was a thrift store in the middle of, let's see, what road trip was it? It might have been our cross country one last September. I'm thinking that might have been. Because I just remember seeing the thrift store. I think we were in the middle of the country. And they had, this was kind of wrapped up on top of like a clothing rack. And I just thought it was kind of cool looking. But I used the um, Italian, made because it, it was made in Italy. So I used Italian gilt, toll. Toll is like this, you know, metal work flowers and leaves and, and things like that. That you see on Italian decor. Next up, now this one was in the 50% sale, so this sold for 13 Laurel Birch. It was a cat lion, I guess. Here's the signature. A lion brooch, Laurel Birch, sold for 13 But the buyer also bought these screwback earrings for 18 for $8.00. Um, they're just a lucite, you say embedded lucite, lucite, and it had this like picture of orchids inside of it. Sold another mug, the Francoma mug, Oklahoma is okay. Sold for 14 that was also full asking price. I'll show you the bottom. 
made by Frank Oma in Oklahoma. Now, I'm glad this sold on Ruby Lane. Um, I think there were other ones listed on eBay and stuff. I just decided I was putting my vintage over here. And Frank Oma can be can be good and bad. There's like some more obscure pieces can actually sell for really good money. And then there's a bunch that's just really common that is harder to sell. Then next up was this whisk sold for full asking price Cutco pearl handle. Um, it's got the classic Cutco shape to the handle. It's just, it's not one of the top selling Cutco utensils, not the highest. Um, I've sold it a handful of times. Um, it's just like a whisk or an egg beater, but it sold for 18. And then I picked these up not that long ago. They're by Gorham. They're like salad tongs or fruit server. I've overlooked these types of things for years and then realized that they probably do sell. So $25 those sold for, and that was full asking price as well. Here's my Depop sale. So I realized I've neglected Depop so much and I was spending one time uh, a part of the week just kind of thinking like, oh, there's so much stuff that I need to cross list over to Depop and make sure I have everything cross listed from eBay over even over to Poshmark. So I was kind of just weeding through and making sure that I've cross posted as much as I can. And so I cross posted this shirt. It had been on eBay I don't think it was on Posh. So I went ahead, I think I put it on Posh. But then I went ahead and like said, you know what, I'm going to throw this on Depop. And it sold that night. Full price, $45. Didn't get an offer, didn't send an offer, anything like that. It's a 1970s shirt. I just, I remember when I picked it up, I bought a couple other new old stock shirts that day. And this one was like on a hanger, but it was still in its folds. So I knew it was part of that same donation, um, came from the same person. They were all the same size. They were all small. And, um, it's got the dagger collar. It's got these funky polka dots, but anyway, $45 sold so fast on Depop, you know, something a little bit unusual. So Depop has its place. I just have to be more conscious of putting my kind of different kind of stuff over there. I think that's what catches people's attention. Now on Etsy, we'll finish up with a couple sales over there. We had this, um, like a teapot or a coffee pot. The brand is Gens. Um, Gens is a Swedish brand. So I, we've sold different pieces of Gens stainless steel stuff over the years, bowls, dishes, um, so we have this coffee, little teapot, shorter coffee pot, and we have a taller one, both listed, but this is the one that sold first. So this sold for $34. We, we liked the handle here when we found it, a really cool, just black handle over on the side. So that's kind of what caught our attention. Very mid-century modern looking. Then this stapler okay this is a heavy duty stapler vintage bostitch stapler it's textured like it's that vintage um kind of rough feeling texture to this stapler and somebody paid like almost the um, same amount it, it sold for 24 dollars, but they sold almost the same amount to ship it because it went to like europe or someplace like that so that was kind of cool then a little bottle opener. Uh, I think it was a made in Italy company. We just picked it up at the bins. It had cool wine bottles on it. Nothing special. Sold for $10. And then I sold another a pattern for $10 as well. Okay. So hopefully those shipping tips help or, you know, just giving you ideas of different ways to ship. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would like to see more of. Um, you know, I'm trying not to fill up the whole what's old video with with shipping. And we've kind of played around with the idea of doing a ship, like a ship with me kind of video. So we might play around with something like that. But 
Anyway, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Um, I know I've been a little more active on YouTube, so don't get used to it. <laughs> um, just kind of try and try and something out and just try and to um, just throw some more content out there. Um, Anyway, what was I going to say? I do know that I have the other half of the vintage of the necktie video. Um, we got to talk about vintage neckties. So that'll be coming up in the next week. And I'll have another what's sold next week, but I'll finally be caught up. So that makes me calm down a little bit to be back on schedule. So leave a comment down below of your best sale of the week, something that you found or that you sold that you're happy to get rid of or that you just thought was like your best sale of the week that you want to share. Thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you later on.